Welcome to Political Notebook, and we speak with analyst Wendy Schiller about all things politics. Thanks for coming in. Now, today, Link Chapey's making a move up to New Hampshire to meet with a county Democratic committee, these small groups that uh, is the way you conduct presidential campaigns. What do you think about his candidacy? Well, I think he's being smart about where he's spending energy. The first primaries, the first caucus, Iowa, and, and we're next door to New Hampshire. It's easy to get there. He wants to get issues out like the environment, like the Middle East. He has credibility on some of these issues from his days as senator, not governor. Mm -hmm. And I think he's trying to get the attention of the Democratic Party and attention for himself and be in the conversation. So is he a spoiler for Hillary Clinton? Is he doing the Obama administration's work to try to muddy her up a little bit? Um, no, I don't know if it's the Obama administration that wants to muddy her up, but I, I think he wants to push the party to be really articulate about liberal stances on issues like the environment. And he's got the money and he's got the time. So I don't think he's going away anytime soon. But Bernie Sanders could do that, couldn't he? I think actually people may not agree with me, but Chafee is better as a spokesperson, I think, on the environment than Bernie Sanders. Wow. All right, well, let's look at uh, something that every driver in Rhode Island or every car owner is concerned about, and that's car taxes. Car so taxes here. Other states have gotten rid of them or reduced them, like Virginia, for example, and they hurt the poor and the lower income people who are trying need a car to go to work. They buy a car that's old. They still get assessed at some crazy value by the state of the car. They can't pay it. It, and we're hurting the economy and particularly income inequality. You want people to get up the economic ladder. Don't charge them all this money to drive a really old car. It doesn't make any sense. But you'll hear the Speaker of the House say, well, then where else do you want to get the money? Well, you know, that's their job. They, they are the General Assembly. They are the governor. They're in there for a reason. And we've got to find a way to f spread the pain, so to speak, and, and really alleviate the pressures on people who are really just trying to make it. Speaking of pain, Providence is looking at a, nearly a billion dollars in a pension liability. They've also got a health care liability of a billion dollars. Is the mayor doing enough to address this? I think it's a time bomb for Providence. I do. I think we're on the rise. The city is on the rise. The state's on the rise. But, you know, this kind of thing can scare investors, municipal bond buyers. I haven't heard anything from Alorza yet on how he's going to solve this problem, and I think this should be the number one problem for him to solve. And now's the time for him to emerge and really focus on this issue for Providence. A little bit overshadowed by Gina Raimondo and Mattiello right now, but in the state. But for Providence, this has got to be number one priority. And other municipalities across the state are facing yeah, similar. Yeah, so. Providence has to figure out how to be a creative leader because you cannot carry this kind of liability forever. There's no way we can afford it. Someday it's going to come home to roost, and I think now is better than later. Maybe his number one challenge, huh? He isn't accountant. We figure if he's an accountant, maybe he can help solve the problem. That's Political Notebook.